Hello, I want to talk about the future of space. Right now, space industry is undergoing a huge renaissance, mostly because of individual private enterprise. For almost the entire history of space exploration, it has been a science and technology funded by governments. Um, that has changed recently, and that has um, accelerated uh, the pace of innovation um, to close to what it was in the grand era of space when it's being funded by some very large governments, the U.S. and Russia primarily. Right now, that private enterprise and investment into space is um, coming from a lot in within Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley wealth, and some Silicon Valley attitudes. Um, notably, Elon Musk with um, SpaceX, um, Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin, um, Richard um, uh, Broughton with um, Virgin. Um, so. Uh, all, all, and others are in are in this mix right now as well, um, trying to use some of the principles of agile manufacturing, agile design, to bring a new era of space technology. And there are a couple of general um, economic models for space right now. Um, there are a number of people who actually think that there is a place for space tourism. In other words, for paying individuals to go into space. Um, I think that's limited, but there certainly is a, a market for it. Um, there is no model for asteroid mining or going to another planet. There's no economic model for that. Um, there may be reasons to do it. A long-term scientific investment, but um, those are going to be many, many years in the future um, before it will pay off. The short-term ones are um, tourism, and then the second one uh, is in um, data collection, and then the third is in um, data transmission. So data collection is about putting up a whole envelope of nano satellites, little tiny satellites that may be no bigger than a grapefruit. And they are, um, in many cases, they have cameras on them or other kind of sensors. And they are looking down on the earth um, and they are tracking their senses that are picking up information through photographs, through opticals, through other uh, spectrum, and they're relaying that back and making a picture. And this is very, very important because increasingly we are um, operating a global economy and we don't know anything about the earth at the global level. We don't know about our own civilization. Just trying to keep track of what we're doing at the global level is very, very difficult. You know, we, we're constantly surprised by how much of the rainforest is being cut down or whether the glaciers in um, the Arctic are melting. And you would think that with the few satellites we have around the Earth that we would know everything, but in fact, it's very, very difficult to pay attention to all the places on Earth, particularly when we get down to a smaller resolution. Um, and one of the ways that we can uh, begin to get a picture of ourselves through the quantified Earth is with this shroud of nano satellites that are serving as the eyes and the senses of the planet. Um, and um, putting them into low Earth orbit is actually the best way. We could send up clouds of drones and we will do that as well, but um, that's a very inefficient way to do it. Sending up a whole swarm of little tiny ro uh, satellites is a much more sensible way. They have a longer, longer half-life and they can see broader, cover more territory. And sometimes the resolution is actually quite impressive. So what we're doing is we're going to quantify the planet. And these um, 
technologies are, and it's very, very useful. It's, it's very important information, both for governments, for understanding uh, science and climate, for tracking material flows and construction, for understanding the politics and the agricultural implications of what's being planted, where, when. There are so many things that we need to know at this high level, getting this overview that we don't have. And space, the space technology is one of the ways we're going to get it because all these things, even though they're very small, have to be listed with very big rockets. And being able to reuse them, being able to make them smaller, being able to make them more reliable um, is absolutely part of this picture. So we want to make a... Um, we want to make a, a, a mirror in the, 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 that we can see the planet ourselves. And the second um, way in which we're going to use space is in um, bringing universal connectivity to everybody. Because um, um, while we are busy putting cell towers every so often, there's still large parts of the Earth where it doesn't quite make sense to erect a cell tower every 10 kilometers or so, or even less, um, in order to have full coverage because of the scarcity of or sparse inhabitation or for other reasons, including um, the oceans. But um, we can actually bring universal connectivity to everybody on the planet by making a web of little tiny nano satellites that can um, they can actually communicate between each other. They can actually pass information, data between each other as well as up and down to the surface of the Earth. And the more of them you have, the more likely you are to get coverage at any one time. You have multiple signals in the same way that you have a GPS system. And by the way, GPS is another thing that's enabled by this um, technology. We can actually increase the resolution of GPS, the more satellites we have up that are participating in that system. Um, but at the very least, we can get data. And it may be that in the future, um, you know, 5G, let's call it 6G, is not going to a cell tower, but actually is going up directly overhead to some satellites that are passing over. And um, that may be the principal way that many people in the world get their internet, their connectivity, their connection, is with the things passing over, which may be supplemented by the cell towers nearby, where the cell towers may actually be connected um, to each, to the satellites. So you may go to a cell tower and then up to the satellite. So um, this vision of kind of a satellite internet is actually um, on the drawing board right now, and there's a number of different startups that are trying to make it happen. Um, and uh, so, so the picture that I want to paint of space in the future is, yes, we'll be sending up some humans, some wealthy humans may be going up to have that experience. And by the way, I don't think it's that a pleasant experience, but they have the experience of being in space. Um, within a 25-year time horizon, I certainly respect some uh, expeditions to Mars of, of crazy... Um, adventure types who are willing to risk their life to go to Mars and maybe back. Um, but that will be a very special, charismatic exception. But most of space is going to be sending up um, rockets into low orbit to blanket, cover the atmosphere with little tiny bots that would be Sensing our activities and showing us a picture of what we're doing globally, and then at the same time transmitting in universal connectivity to everybody on the planet all the time. And I think that's those two things alone are going to drive a lot of the technology into space in the coming decades.